based on merit and credibility alone and make mm. that the norm. Right? Yes, and I, and I I'm saying this from the background Beyond of a nation that 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 championed Afrocentrism and 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 negritude mm. and all things black power. Right, mm. the black man was supposed to be this guiding mm. principle of what should be, and mm. Ghana was supposed to lead that. Mm. So, what is it now? I don't get it. Yes, my point is that my point is that if you see. The thing that is not, if, I mean, let's just assume all these perceptions are true. It's not only one candidate that will pay. Literally, all the candidates will pay. Just so their payments becomes a standard. And there are many instances where, based on, the same based on the same perception, the person who paid less, and these are many, many incidents in the past, or many, many reports in the past, that a person who paid less actually won the election. So it's not about how much you're paying. The payment becomes some form of a standard. You know, it's like it a couple of But it shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. But then, and, if, and my thing is, wrong mm. is wrong is wrong is wrong. Yeah. Just because everybody else is doing it mm. does not make it right. And as parents, we tell our children this all the time. When you go to school, just because your friends are doing these things does not mean you should do it. Mm. Right. So where's the where, where's the morality in all of this? I I don't get it. Mm. Yes, I understand. But then the thing is that it's like if you're going to. Uh, I don't want to say a chief's house, but then there are certain places that if you're going, you have to go with a drink. You don't just go straight. So this is like a kokoko. This is like a foot into so the what's, door. What's the difference between this and I'm not referees. justifying this at all. I'm so, not so justifying this at all. So what are your opinions on this, No, my actually. opinion is that it shouldn't be the case. It's very wrong. But then I want us to look beyond this, to look at the situation on the ground before we criticize the situation on the ground. So the situation on the ground is that, I mean, these politicians are seasoned politicians. You understand. Apart from maybe the, the, the one who got the one vote um, at the election, these politicians are seasoned politicians. They know their situation on the ground. And they know that if you don't go with the co 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 it becomes a problem. What if we all decide? Because, mm -hmm. again, this is an internal If you decide, election. one person will still go. Let that one person go. Do mm -hmm. you get me? This, ha this was not always the norm. Mm -hmm. In 1957, this, wasn't, this isn't how mm -hmm. we started. So if we've lost track down the line, mm. it doesn't mean we should continue going that way. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. So what is it? 20 years from now, we're going to be spending how much? Do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, we're not there yet. We shouldn't you. do that. And if we, if we went on the, on, the, on the rough track, we should acknowledge it, that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be doing this. There are other ways people can vote for us. We can, we can, we, you meet them. You've prepared so, you've done so many things. Mm -hmm. So if we all unite and we say we are not going to, bid against each other because we are one we are one party let the delegates vote on merit and merit alone they won't have any option mm. and if they decide not to come fine because you are voting me to serve you and all the people i interviewed said that they wanted someone who helped them win the 2020 elections mm -hmm. right and this isn't unique to mpp it's all the political parties do it and dc they all do it it's not cool mm. i i i won't disagree with you at all but my point is that this has become the norm. We should not be the norm, okay? But then before you say, you give your message, based on the perception on the ground, before you give your message, or based on what, you know, uh, for, for instance, what Samir Afe was saying on point of view, before you give your message, there has to be some form of an entrance. You don't come to me. You know, these delegates are and, coming and from how, various honestly, places. this is how corruption starts. Hmm. Right, because if you have this perception that Wilberforce is standing for X, Y, Z, I know he's the right guy for the job, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to vote for him unless he gives me money. Now I've put you in a position where you now have to go rely on somebody to fund your campaign. Mm -hmm. And now that guy will come into this country, wherever they are from, maybe they are in Ghana, maybe they are not, mm -hmm. and say, give me tax breaks, give me this, give me that. So in the end, yes, you gave me 1,000 cities, you gave me 1,500 cities. Once you become whatever leader you wanted to be, I can't hold you accountable to serve me because you bought my yeah. vote. So now the person you're serving is the person who financed your election, yeah. and you didn't come to power to serve that person. So where are we going as a continent and as a, as a nation if we continue to sell our votes, our very democracy that we fought so hard for? Yeah. What, what, what is going to become of us? Yeah, uh, it, it's true. Because um, bottom line is that payment for whatever favor should not be the norm but you see people have a way of justifying things to themselves and we shouldn't. yes people have a way of justifying things to themselves they'll, they'll say for instance okay so um let's look at uh, a national delegates confab 
standard national delegates confab, for instance, you have people coming from all regions. I mean, uh, we, we had over, uh, over 6,000 people yes, on the ground. over 6,000 exactly. delegates. Over 6,000 delegates, the, the supporters yes. supporters aside, people mm. who were voting were 6,000. So yeah. if you're giving 1,000 cities to each person, mm -hmm. do you know what the, the Koforidia can do with that money? Because we yeah, came there, we splurged money, we left. Yes, but right? they, they are not, they are not, these are private citizens standing for I completely an understand yes. that. So, Do you get me? But we also have, as a private citizen, mm -hmm. I owe something to my nation. I went to Koforidia, I bought coconut, the guy sold it to me for two cities. I knew very well it was, it was one city, mm -hmm. but I said, it's fine, let me just give you, I bought like 10 cities worth of coconut and I mm -hmm. paid the same amount I would pay in Accra. Hmm. I wouldn't say I'm a private citizen, so let me leave it to somebody else to do. I'm just saying we need to be a bit more intentional. When yes. we look at our underdevelopment, right. we always blame the other person. Yes, we don't blame ourselves, and yeah. we are active participants hmm. in our own misery, and we never talk about it. I, I, you see, I don't want just to assume that because monies were spent, huge monies were spent in this particular election. For instance, if an election is supposed to cost a person, such an election. And we don't even know how much these elections cost. cost. A, a person. Yeah, but why, until... Why don't we know? Until That's there's a, a problem. No, but there's, until there's a law to say that you should declare same, it's, it's but you're difficult. a lawyer. Don't you think we should have laws to declare this? So people just spend as they see fit I think, because there are no I think, laws. I think with so this particular election, if it's, if it's, for instance, uh, a presidential election for the whole nation, then yes, I agree to that extent. There should be laws to make such transparent. I think even if it was but a then, school election, but then, people no, should declare it. No, it, should, it shouldn't be Why that case. Why not? Because I, I, I don't know how much you spend every day. I don't know how much you spend to, to get your hair done you, or you anything. Want to, you want so people to vote you into power. You want to serve people. If you're starting yes. off like this, with no checks and balances, who's hmm. going to check and balance you when it comes to when the national elections? When you get there, there are checks and balances for you. But when, when you're when, starting off, you, have, you no, can do whatever you want. Yes, when, when you're starting, I'm just relating it to, let's say, a school election. Or I'm even relating it to the NPP uh, election here. If I want to stand for an election, I don't think you should be able to look into my finances to know how much I'm spending. If, I, if I'm put into office where I have access to your funds, then you should be able to. So I fully support uh, the audit into GNPC. I fully support that audit. I saw, I saw the press release by the GNPC saying it's not necessary for, for, for a forensic audit into the account that I've been. But once you are not in a public office, you're a private citizen going for a private position with your own private funds, not having access to public funds, the public has no reason to look into I, your I funds. I think as a developing country, hmm. and I, I will say this and say it again, we lose sight of the fact that we haven't arrived yet. A lot hmm. of the things we do, we cannot afford to do. You're living in a country where people are living on less than $2. Minimum wage is, what, nine, nine Ghana cities a day, right? We haven't arrived yet to be splurging the way we do. And if it's wrong, we should call it what it is. We shouldn't behave as though, okay, because legally is right, then morally we can excuse it. No. You can still have a successful election without what? bidding, what? saying, oh, mm -hmm. uh, Jifa, Jifa gave me 1,000 cities, mm -hmm. so Apioko, wh what is your move? Mm -hmm. You know, because I've started it. Now, Apioko is forced to go look for funds where she shouldn't be looking for them. Mm. And once she gets those funds, and once she's elected into office, and this, I'm not even criticizing the, the, the candidates. Mm -hmm. That's the funny thing. I'm not even criticizing the candidates. I'm, I'm criticizing the delegates. Mm. Do you get me? Because they've created this norm mm -hmm. for the candidates to offer them something. If the person offers you something and you say no, what's wrong with that? If all 6,000 of you say no, then when they come to power, you can hold them accountable for it because you didn't sell them anything, hmm. right? So we should have a, a bit of, we should, we should have dignity in the way we hmm. do things. We should say, Wilberforce, I'm not taking your money. I'm voting for you because I expect A, B, C, D from you. It shouldn't hmm. be, oh, once he gets so into power, so then, he won't do anything so, so, for so, me. So, then what so then, let me take his money. Yes. So then what then would be your argument for people who, who pay less? For instance, other candidates are paying 1,000 CDs and then you pay 200 CDs. I think but nobody should still, pay. But then the person who pays 200 CDs still wins the but election. Robert, why are you paying to begin with? Hmm. If you know you are the right guy for the job, when you go, in, when you go for a job interview, mm -hmm. do you pay the person who interviews you? I know some people do it where they ask you to pay them. No. If I know that my CV says mm -hmm. that I'm credible, I know I've built this skill set, I know the, 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 the kind of value I will bring to your organization, why would I pay you? It's an insult to me mm -hmm. to pay you to hire me. Mm. It shouldn't be any different when you're running for office. If I know when I get into this, then I can take this political party to the 2020 election and kill it and actually serve this nation and take it where it needs to be. Mm. Why should I pay you? The only reason I'm paying you is because 
you've made it the norm. Hmm. And it's, it's not needed. It's not hmm. necessary. We shouldn't be paying. That's all I'm saying. Nobody should pay. 100% I agree with you. That should be the norm. But is that the norm? I, you, keep saying but. Be... you keep saying but. And <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I agree like... with you. The thing is that these people need to win the election. Before you are you're able to take uh, you know, there's a, there's the a country problem to where it can't be say, you want to... be, be, why, they, why, they, why they're powerful? <laughs> why they pay? Why they pay? <laughs> no, no, that's not that. Why they pay? No, of oh, course. Of course, of course <laughs> Minibia will Minibia. always be, be, be paying. <laughs> no, but the point is that you need to, before you're able to, to help your party, before you're able to help Ghana, before you're able to do what you intend to do, you need to get there first. So in getting there first, this norm has been created. But I, I agree with you is that this norm should this should not be i think we are saying the same thing but by then and they've already you've already destroyed the whole thing of him serving you mm. so once he gets into office he won't do anything for me so let me let me take as much as i can from him now mm. so when i do that you already know so if you don't build the community centers and all these things that i'm expecting from you <clears throat> you're you, you're you're now serving the the guy who's rich enough to not even need these things mm. and if that guy wants a five hundred thousand cd break you give it to him because he funded your, your, your money, your, 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 your campaign. So all I'm saying is as voters, because we always criticize the government, the government is the government that, but we are also active participants in our own underdevelopment by the way we end officials. Mm -hmm. Let's not force them to do things they shouldn't do. We have really strong people in this country. We have very credible people in this country. Every candidate that was there at the conference on Saturday deserved to be there. They were mm. all there based on merit. They've earned their seats at mm. the table. There's no need to add money to the equation. That's mm. all I'm saying. And if we need to add money to the equation, let's donate it to the people of Coridria. <laughs> Especially the coconut seller. Really? <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I have a quote yeah. by um, Patrice Lumumba that I wanted to share mm. with us. I read this quote when I was about 16 years old and mm. I was very, very proud. But I reflected on it this weekend and I was really sad and, and I, 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 was, I was really sad. So I'm going to share it with you. He says that the day will come when history will speak, but it will not be the history which will be taught in Brussels, Paris, Washington or United States. Africa will write its own history in both North and South. It will be a history of glory and dignity. Mm. Right. So when I when I when I first read this, I felt so proud. I was like, nobody's going to write our history for us. We're going to write it ourselves. It will be a glorified one. It will be a dignified one. But I look at us every day and I'm, I cringe. Hmm. I'm not sure we are writing a glorified history and a dignified history for the next generation. And we lose sight of that, that we are all building legacies. If Nkoma had not done what he did in his time, you and I will probably not be here. If the UGCC didn't do what they needed to do, we wouldn't be benefiting. Mm. So what are we doing to help the next generation benefit? And I think sometimes we're too short-sighted. We, we think of today and we don't really appreciate delayed gratification. Mm. Okay. Bottom line, I agree with you. I think the <laughs> argument is settled. There's no but anymore. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. So uh, those those delegates who are, who have been uh, you know asking for, well, they for don't money, ask, but there's a there's a, there, there's a expectation. <laughs> so let's stop the expectation. You can see that the person who just entered their room to give their message, they we'll look around. You. you have seen the person alone or with people, and the person has not yet given money. You can say, "Oh no, I'm going to buy." Like you're kidding. Oh no, I'm going to buy. But you can see people behind me. <laughs> You know, there was something. So I think might all be, that. And yes, might be there, and that might be. All, all that must end. <laughs> all that must end. Let's not ask. And uh, also, those who give, let's not give. Let's have a clean, a thoroughly clean election. Let's vote on issues as Ghanaian people. Yes. Now, uh, before we go on the break, I was telling you something yesterday. You know, my place got broken into. Oh my into. God, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, I it's am true. So, so you so know sorry. what the what the what the and, people. And, and you're I, very I, brave for being here this morning because oh, I would have been God. crying, put my pillows under yeah. my head. Yeah, so when, when, I, when I got back from court last night, uh, yesterday, when I got home, I saw my door was open and the whole place wow. was ransacked. They took lots of things. And then when, you know, it's, it's sad because some, some two little kids in, in the house said they saw two people wow. come inside. And when they were coming inside, they were mentioning my name as if they as knew if they me. Knew exactly. So wow. they thought, okay, so maybe these are friends. ones of my, yeah, these are, you know, some people I know. So they wow. got into the house, they did what they did. And they left, and it's sad. But I, I'm I just so want sorry. to, like, I just I'm want really to tell. I, I know, I know they're probably watching. 
Yeah, I just want yeah, to tell yeah, them yeah. that. Yeah, I just want to tell them that Jesus saves. Like I forgive you. Jesus saves. That's wow. all I just want to say you, to you're, you. You're way more mature than me. Oh. Because I would have been like, Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus saves. No, I but mean, it's hopefully not, it's they'll, not fair. they'll it's find not fair reason to change their ways. I don't think, I don't think anybody should mm. take anything that doesn't belong to them. Because mm. it's it beyond just taking your things. Now, when you go home, you will think maybe they are coming back. Yeah, I feel they're vulnerable. You should never invade anybody's mm. space like that. If mm. they needed something, they could have just met with you and mm. borrowed money from you. Yeah. You never do that. You, it, it's shameful, actually. Mm. Anyway, so... so don't go stealing. It, yes. It's shameful. If you're watching it, it's shameful. Mm. So up next is the news review segment for today. And um, uh, you don't wearing a black tie. There was yes. a story on our website. Um, a young man, pastor trainee, who got oh my killed. God, yes. He's, he, yes, he was also in the same house with me in Presec. House three wow. young man house yes Benjamin wow. uh may his soul rest, rest in, in perfect peace, peace. And, yes. and and the way he died like mm. I honestly I'm always thinking if if we are alive in this country mm. it's just because we are, we are lucky or we are blessed yeah, or something by grace. because it's somebody by will grace. get drunk reverse their car and just yeah. knock you down and, mm. and and you are dead just like that you know mm. we really need to be a bit more intentional about people we let on the streets like mm. if somebody's drunk they should not be driving. Mm. Very, right. very and, important. And, and I'm also, uh, thank you to the policeman who saved the driver, even though he did something. Well, I think yes. the mobs were going to attack him. They were going to lynch him. So, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll go for a quick break now. Up next is the news review segment. Remember to join us on uh, all social media platforms with the uh, hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550 585 We'll be right back. <laughs> Wherever the weekend sporting action happened, we will bring it to you here on Scorecard. Every goal, every dunk, every punch, the winning strides, and the winning volleys. Come to international media. He said, look, wait, sit and wait. Let me have a meal with my people. <laughs> and I think that that's the same cool, it's the same organization he brings to the field every time I've seen him play. He looks to me like somebody who has played over 50 cups already. Okay. But this guy... He's barely played over 25 cups for the national team. All of the weekend's action in one place. Scorecard, every Sunday at 8 p.m. prompt on CTTV. Tune in to The Point of View, Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. as Bernard Avlet takes the news further. He will bring the right guests, ask them the relevant questions, and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day. What one action have you taken? What one statement have you issued? Well, we, we've been issuing statements, even this... Um, on the specific issue of... This very one. Of, uh, of uh, no uh, bed syndrome. Since, since you are saying that you've had this before. Well, we keep talking. The Point of View with Bernard Affleck. Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. Every Thursday night on CTTV, you're welcome to join women from different backgrounds and opinions as they weigh in on your relationship issues. Watch Sister Sister as the ladies get real with issues about love, marriage, betrayal, sex, dating, trust, finances, and more. So, so some of the guys are like, oh no, they want to wait before they get married. That's so, no, 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 so they're a little bit more so, 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 like, Oh, I'm saying, I'm holding on, lady. <laughs> What if she does or they kiss and all of that? Mm -hmm. And still nothing. That's it. If he so really she wants you like that. See, it's that. It. So it's like, oh. Join Jessica and her sisters for City TV's all women talk show, Sister Sister, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Also, live on 97.3 City FM. Okay. Oh, 
welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. And before the first half, mm. we were just talking based on the video by Sami Rafe mm -hmm. from last night, okay? They, they are all allegations. We are not saying anything actually happened. But we're mm. going to delve right into the news review, starting with the daily graphic. Our closed down courts not fit for purpose. That is coming from the Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. um, she visited the Kaswa court and found out that they use chamber pot. Yes. Which I've, is I've, very terrible. Yes, I've, I've heard about that particular court. It's really sad. No wow. washroom anywhere. So I know lawyers would go there and then, um, f for instance, even Yaupon went there the other time and then he literally went to a, a person's house nearby. He doesn't know the person. You know, just went to knock on the I gate. That I, I need to urinate. I can't. I can't. I can't see myself working at a place without. Yeah, it's sad. It's, it's, it's sad. We need to things. look at these little, little things yeah. that we've lost sight of. Oh, yes. Mm. EC workers to drag Charlotte or say to special prosecutor. That story is on page twenty. They won't let this woman be. You. Tell us to say well. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure uh, Honorable Mutakil will have his opinions on, on that, that. <laughs> issue. Well, the Ghanaian Times says Chairman of the Christian Council laments. Too many crooks in Kasok as he lashes out at fake pastors. So that's what we have this morning on the Ghanaian Times. As well as uh, President arrives in Volta region for a three-day tour. Now, uh, this particular trip has been, has been questioned why the former deputy, or the current still, deputy sports minister was reinstated just before this particular trip. Uh, President reinstates Deputy Sports Minister, NSA Board Chairman as well. So initially it was just the Deputy Sports Minister, but now the NSA Board Chairman's name has also been added to this particular reinstatement list, seeming that almost all the appointees were, were not complicit in this uh, or in the allegations leveled against them. Now, probe blay over vulgar opulence. This is coming from the Minority Four Stories on page 17 this morning of the Ghanaian Times. And in the Chronicle, a just so SHS whistleblower goes to court over banking, bonking hmm. of school girls. So we, we, we mentioned this, early, this story yeah. earlier on. Uh, NDC wants GNPC probed. There's a beautiful picture of Honorable Adam. Muntawakilu on here. Yeah, He's a minority Kilo. spokesperson of energy. <laughs> and petitioners pray Amidu to prosecute Charlotte Osei. Yes, those are the stories on the front page of the Chronicle. Okay, well, NPLs reach 8.6 billion Ghana cities. That's what we have on the front page of the Business and Financial Times. Business and Financial Times. NPLs reach 8.6 billion Ghana cities, record high. And this is according to a, a Bank of Ghana report. And the full story is on page two. Also, Barclays appoints Abena Osei Poku as new MD. And finally, private sector loans drop by 3.6%. Mm. In the custodian, uh, NPP lines up bombardiers. Mm. So there's a picture here of Freddie Blay, who's the national chairman, John Bordu, general secretary, Sami Owuku, national organizer, and Anto. FF Anto, second mm. national vice chairman. NDC boycotts MPP confab over Charlotte Osei. That story is on <laughs> page seven. And Baumia grabs top UN post. Story is on page seven. Okay, and uh, let's look at this one here. Today newspaper, who succeeds? I mean, from the Today newspaper, the front page of the Today newspaper, who succeeds? EC boss. Mensa Bonsu Akwete in the mix. Now, prosecute Charlotte Osei, EC petitioners. And uh, finally, pay global sponsors 2018 Ghana party in the pack. Okay, interesting. In the Daily Heritage, robbers attack Metro Mass, nine other vehicles at Manukrum. Uh, uh, that story is on page five. Produce missing documents, court orders, investigator in Opuni's case. Stories on page two. And finally, minors fight Akufuado over suicide among members due to delay in lifting ban on small scale mining. That story is on page three. Okay, well, finally, for me, the new crusading guide. 
Ga East MCE hailed for delivering new market facility and also Ekufado to contest 2020 elections. Four stories on page three and ten. And uh, another story here says, I am too broke to embark on flamboyant campaign. Dr. Oh. Amwakumba. So, so he, he didn't says do this. it because he's broke, not because uh, yeah. he wants to do what's right. Yes, he <laughs> says, I'm too broke to embark on flamboyant campaign. And also, <laughs> Agro Ecom wins Gold Excellence Award. Finally, Togbe Afede slams Fedi Blay over 275 buses controversy so mm. um uh, we'll probably look at that story shortly as well yes and finally the daily statesman president akufuado tours volta region that story is on page three let us work in unity for ghana npp members told there's a beautiful picture of john bordu who's the general secretary of the npp stories on page two and president reinstates Deputy Sports Minister and NSA Chair. There's a picture here of Pius Hajide and Kojo Ba Ajaman, um, the Deputy Youth and Sports Minister and the Board Chairman of NSA. And I think we're done. Okay, so now uh, we'll just introduce our guest for this morning's uh, edition of the News Review. And of course, on Breakfast Daily, we had. We have uh, Honorable Adam Mutawakilu in the studios here with us. Honorable Adam Mutawakilu is the Member of Parliament for Damongo, and he's also the Minority Spokesperson on Mines and Energy, and he's the same gentleman calling for uh, an audit of a forensic audit of GNPC's account. That'll be the first story we are looking at as GNPC has also responded <laughs> to, as GNPC has also responded to, uh, well, what he's actually calling for. Good morning, Honorable Adam Mutawakilu. Yeah, Welcome to back morning. to you. Brother, the great one. <laughs> the great one. It's always, it's always uh, good to have you here. Very informative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we to this place. <laughs> you have newspaper review. Where yeah. the first I and uh, Afanya Market. Yes, yes, you were here before. Oh. Right? Yeah. Honorable Afanya <laughs> Anyway, Five we've also years. been joined by Isa Fuseni. He is the Honorable Isa <coughs> Fuseni. Is the Member of Parliament for Okainkwe North. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast Daily. Ah, uh, thank you. Super. Thanks right. for having Super. me. <laughs> Thanks it's for being here. Time, right? hey, it's my second time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you okay. want to jump to the first yeah, story. So we'll it's always right a privilege it. to be in the company of the great one. <laughs> 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 we'll Who's calling for all types of proof set? <laughs> So we'll start from a story on citynewsroom.com. Right. We didn't finance for the Blaze campaign. That is coming from the GNPC. So the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation has said it did not play any role in the campaign of the newly elected chairman of NPP, Freddie Blay. Now this follows, uh, this was an allegation of vote buying levied against, um, leveled against Mr. Blay ahead of him emerging emerging as a winner in the um, campaign that we had, mm -hmm. the, the com conference that we had over the weekend. So I will quote this, this story in the, on the website, a statement by the GNPC. Okay, let me just quote the minority statement first. It's a pretty long one. We take judicial notice that the newly elected chairman, uh, Mr. Freddie Blay, is not a mere private citizen, but a high-ranking public official, having been appointed by President Akufuado as the board chairman of the prestigious Ghana National Petroleum Corporation since last year. For someone who manages our oil and gas reserves, reserves one would have expected the highest form of modesty and prudence in outlook. However, the, unconscion the unconscionable extravagant purchase of 275 buses for NPP constituency executives mm -hmm. after depositing his so-called personal funds of three million dollars in an 11.4 million transaction which has sparked national outreach at a time ambulances are in short supply and proceeding further at the Congress grounds to share hordes of cash to delegate plus the distributions of tons of goodies in the form of branded snacks and other consumables does not only mark a new law in our country's democratic credential, but demands of us a rise as responsible, demands of us to rise as responsible citizens who care about the future of the nation. So that is a statement from the minority. Mm. But 
the GNPC chief executive KK Sapon clarified that GNPC never supported Freddie Blay, adding that the corporation has a robust financial system that will not allow any official to approve or receive funds to support programs not set out in its work program and mm -hmm. budget. So we'll start with that story. On the one hand, the minority is accusing uh, Mr. Freddie Blay and the GNPC says they didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, thank you very much and good morning to our cherished viewers and more especially the good people of Damongo constituency. Yeah, the minority of a concern to the activities of uh, the newly elected chairman of the NPP, Freddie Blay, towards the election during mm -hmm. and that is why we have to issue this statement, taking into cognizance his position as the board chairman of our national oil company, which is GMPC. It raises red flags. First and foremost, we look at uh, Freddie Blade. This is not the first time he's contested elections before. Mm -hmm. He contested election to become MP, to become second deputy speaker of parliament. Four years ago, he contested to become the vice chairman in all these occasions. This level of opulence wasn't shown. Two, in 2015, NPP as a party was in crisis when he was the acting chairman of the party, where the headquarters was nearly, nearly mortgaged just because of two million Ghana cities. And as acting chairman and a good businessman, he couldn't salvage the image of the party as a then. Then, few months, one and a half years after being appointed board chairman, his business has grown, as he claimed, to the extent that he can now personally dole out $3 million as a guarantee for $11.4 million uh, loan for the supply of 275 uh, buses. We see this as a red flag. And in energy sector, all this counts in posturing an image about the national oil company more especially when certain transactions are being signed by him just a month ago the freddie blay went to russia and signed a gas sales agreement with ross red on behalf of ghana national petroleum corporation so you don't just see him like okay he's just a board chairman he signs and commit ghana to financial obligations and as minority we see his activities to be out of place and therefore they need to audit his activities very important GMPC has come out is good but when his activities is being audited at GMPC and maybe any other and it becomes clear that he didn't use our oil money, I think it boosts the image of the National Oil Company and put that on a pedestal for foreign, how the, the, the world view us. If today the caption is that the board chairman of GNPC used three million dollars personal anywhere in the world raises red flags because of the board chairmanship. So it's very, very important that it is done so that GMPC's name will be cleared. Mm. And then it is certain that, okay, wherever he got the money, other investigations will reveal it. But he, as Freddie Blay, Honorable Freddie Blay, hadn't come up with details of how he got the $3 million, as we speak, so that we could put it to test. There's no any clear details of how he raised the $3 million dollars to use as a guarantee and that is why we are emphasizing and we are calling for that it is very important for our fledging uh, oil and gas sector do you, you know the details of the contract with the russian company that you're it's a gas saying? agreement where they are supposed to provide lng to our national need in terms of gas to power our uh, thermal plants okay i would have expected the CEO to have signed it. And not the board chair.
But that goes to the extent to tell you that he undertake the business activities of GMPC. Because by signing that agreement, he's officially committing GMPC to certain financial obligations. Would you, would you describe this, him signing as an illegality? Would you no, would it's be not. as bold to that say is that? Why, that is why we are calling. That is why we are saying that because we don't want him to be seen that oh, he's just a board chairman. He doesn't engage in the day-to-day -day running of the corporation. That is why we're trying to let them know that he commits government. And any financial, uh, their work program, it is approved by the board. Then it comes to parliament. And he's the one who chairs the board. You understand my point? So, these activities, per what happened, we mm. thought that is very important. Mm. The, wor the, work, the, the, work, the work program was unanimously approved by parliament. And the work program is supposed to, well, according to the GNPC, Parliament unanimously approved of the work program. And the work this, program is supposed to be in such a way as to prevent any officer. No. You disagree with GMPC's no, position? No, no. You see, Parliament do not engage in procurement activities. Mm -hmm. Parliament approved lump sum. So we must be very clear. So it's not like Parliament do, does the day-to-day -day or they put detail one-on-one. -on -one. In everything they want to do, they come or oh, want to execute this, mm -hmm. want to execute that. Parliament look at it, but Parliament do not go to say, "Oh, bring the procurement bills of quantities for us to look at." No, 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 no. It is expected okay. that in the course of uh, implementing, mm -hmm. that is what they do. Two, and Parliament approving it unanimously, it is good to take the hands out, certain uh, concerns that members raise. Certain concerns. So, mm -hmm. the parliament approving doesn't mean that totally. Your parliament said, okay, there were certain concerns members raised in respect to certain uh, allocations. Okay. So, it is expected that all this will be taken on board in the implementation. Okay. So, it shouldn't be looked at, okay, once parliament approved, I go to do whatever I want. No. Mm. I want it to be very clear. Parliament mm -hmm. will approve the lamps. Oh, you. You want to contract a head office at an initial cost of $20 million. You say, oh, okay, it's good. But the $20 million, I'm sure. So that means that it gives you a lead as to what we expect you to do. And therefore, in the implementation, we are not there day to day to make sure that this is the consultant you decided to pick or not. Okay. At the end of the day, you now come and account to us. So it is very important that when we say government approved unanimously, you take the hands out as well to look. Co consents will be raised by members and you take okay. it on board in the implementation. Oh, a good morning to you. And um, I want to say a special good morning to my constituents in Okanku enough as well. Um, and also to congratulate Chairman Wasme Blay, the fresh... <laughs> Chairman of the New Patriotic Party and his team. Um, congratulates the Vice Chairman, uh, Madame Sobbire, F. F. Anto, Omari Wadie, the General Secretary, John Wedu, mm. the organizer, Samir Wuku, the youth organizer, Nana B, the women <laughs> organizer, Kate Jemfua, and the treasurer, Banku um, it was It was a sight to behold. And once again, the New Patriotic Party showed our democratic credentials in Kufrudia. And people might have issues with um, a few of the things that happened there. But once again, we showed that uh, when it comes to democratic credentials, how things are done, um, we, are, we are the flag bearers in that, in, that, in that light, and people will look up to us. We, 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 we have been able to go through the whole cycle. We started um, elections right from polling station to constituency to region. Now we are done with our national. We pray and hope that by the time our opponents on the other side come to these processes, mm. they don't disturb the security of this nation. And I, we pray that they also have a seamless process like we have had. We have shown the way. So we pray that they will follow us we as has been, been, done, as been, done, <laughs> has been <laughs> done in the past. GNPC and Osimewu Blaze, um, 
negotiation on those mini buses. I mean, <laughs> if you hear buses, buses, buses over and over again, these are mini buses. I mean, they are urban buses, passenger capacity, maybe 12 or Worth 11.4 million dollars. Oh. That's fine. Mm. So let's That's not under describe it. It's still eleven point four million dollars. That's fine. With which That's Freddie fine. Blade paid three million dollars. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We mm. still insist mm. that this transaction is at an arm's length. It is it is it is a transaction that is very transparent. And thankfully there's a bank involved in here. And everybody knows UNB is involved in here. Mm -hmm. The documents are all over the place. People could verify. I think that it's it's much I do about nothing, trying to rope in GNPC and all that. I also sit on the finance committee in parliament. I was in there when the work program for GMPC was approved for the year. And there were line items specifically as to where appropriations meant for GMPC should be used. I can't foresee how GMPC will get in there. And I think it's even insulting the intelligence of the management team headed by KK Sapon at GMPC. We are talking about KK Sapon. He has proven himself across sector, various sectors in, in, in Ghana. And I know he's so capable. I can't foresee how. A board chairman, for God's sake. Let's look at our go corporate governance structure. How is a board chairman able to get $3 million from a, an entity like GMPC to do a private transaction? But according, I think that for to, us, for us, in, parliament, minority, in fact, according to Honorable Muta Akili, who is seated right next to you, yeah. the board chairman signs contracts on behalf of GMPC. I and must admit that Ghana. seated here now. I am not privy to that. Okay. And that is that is his word. I am not privy to that. That he signed and committed Ghana in a financial transaction. I will even I will even be surprised that um this will happen, right? But but it, it be as it may. There are structures within GMPC. Google There are structures within GMPC. A board chairman is not involved in day to day management of GMPC or any other entity. So he couldn't have, <laughs> what are they saying, swindled three million dollars from GMPC or what? This is not the first election uh, 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 Chairman Blaze running. Like he said, he's been in parliament two, two terms or three terms. He's, he's held the position of a second deputy speaker, a first deputy speaker. He's held the position of a vice chairman of our party and now he's the ultimate chairman. I, I, can't, I can't really see this. I mean, look, banks today. Right? The bank is not in the business, or banks are not in the business of taking collateral. Banking is moved on. Today I can go to a bank with a business plan based on the cash flows that I expect from whatever transaction I'm doing. The bank will lend me money without a collateral. They need to verify and make sure that my cash flows are solid and that whatever I'm, revenues I'm saying the entity or the business is going to earn, based on that, I can get a loan from a bank. Hmm. We've moved from collaterals because banks are not in the business of taking houses or any properties to go and um, um, sell them off or something. Mm -hmm. And especially in this, in this uh, transaction like this one, where there are physical assets like vehicles, which the bank can actually put its hands on or, or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or refer to mm -hmm. if, if, if the transaction hits, 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 it's a snag. So I, I, I think the, 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 the majority, uh, the, the, sorry, the minority is... The, 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 bank, the, the bank did not give... Freddie Blade three million dollars. That money came from Freddie Blade. Listen. It is it is it is it is noteworthy that um, today trans transactions like this will come to the fore mm -hmm. for national discussion. I think it's good. I think it's good for our body politic, it's good for corporate governance in terms of GMPC. And it's it's it helps us improve our processes and, and, and transparency. Hitherto, in the past. Those were done and shrouded in, 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 in uh, not, not to equalize. Mm -hmm. I want to but you see, perspective. not to equalize, not yes. to equalize. I will, I will tell you something that most of us don't know. NDC set up something called the Heroes Fund. Do you remember the Heroes Fund? I want us to be progressive. We are going to be progressive, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you from where we have come from. And I'm telling you the progression hmm. from where we have come from, from and the Heroes Fund today. experience and where we are today. To the extent that we sit on TV in the morning to discuss a transaction done by the chairman of a political party like the New Patriotic Party. I'll mention again the Heroes Fund. The Heroes Fund was set up by the NDC. What was the purpose of the Heroes Fund? To reward members of the NDC who, for one reason or the other, had gotten into some trouble or something in the body politic of, of their party. 
I tell you, at the time I was working for a company. The company had gone to China. This was 2010, 2011. And the company is there. All documentation is there. Go, you can go and verify. They bought vehicles and put in those heroes fund. Vehicles. Fiat taxi taxis. Mm. This was a private entity. And the heroes fund never paid a dime. Okay. Like I said, I want us to be you progressive. You can verify this. No, I, I, I don't want to this verify is, no, incidents. This is, this is where we have come from. Incidents of the This is where of we have come from. Transactions shrouded in secrecy. Hmm. Because if you do that, then you turn the discussion into a hero's no, fan discussion, what, which we no, don't no, want. I, I am putting in context where we have come from, direction. where we have come from, and where we are today. It is good that we are discussing this transaction. JNPC are not but happy are, with a forensic audit. Can we have a forensic audit? And what is there to hide? Okay. What mm. is there to hide? If there is something that JNPC is hiding, then they will not be happy with the forensic audit. But I think it's, it's all I do about nothing. It's wasting everybody's time. Okay. I think it's wasting everybody's time. And that this is an arm's length. They can go to the bank and verify. Whatever, whatever they want to verify. I don't see how they want to rope in GMPC and the management of GMPC in this. Look, the management of GMPC, unlike what was happening uh, previously, okay. are focused on developing our upstream oil and energy sector rather Thank than you. delving into um, for Thank want of a much. better Honorable way. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes uh, distractions like this, which are, of, are very... The uh, no, this? let me first of all, I think we are in a globalized world. And some, uh, science. <laughs> Just pick your phone, Google, Rosnet agreement with the GMPC, and it will tell you that Freddie Blaze signed the agreement. Mm -hmm. We are not in, the scientific, uh, in the, those days. Mm -hmm. And I hope I just yes, use you your Google me. it yes. and you saw it. Yes. So we are not living. Two, we must be very careful with distinguish a party as a structure mm -hmm. and an individual. Mm -hmm. If it is N NPP that is undertaking the purchase of the item, the 270, because it is a structure and it's yearly audited, mm -hmm. audit report submitted to a letter commission, there is a process you can track. So we must be very careful when you take an individual. Similarly, GMPC will be audited. No, let me come. GMPC will be audited an at the end of the year, and they will bring a report to an parliament for me and you. Please, an individual is doling out three million dollars. Uh -huh. That is where the question mark is. Who is the board chairman of GMPC? Probably, I'm not disputing the integrity of GMPC. The that's activity, exactly what that they're is doing. What that's exactly what no, they're doing. They are, Calling for a forensic audit and you're saying, you know, the activity on the integrity of, of the NPC. No, 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 The activity of the board chairman could go beyond just the accounts of what we approve for GMPC. We know in this oil field, maybe he's not been in the energy sector for a long time. I've, I've not actually been there. That is the point. <laughs> okay. In your position, there are more things that can happen that do not pass through the accounts of GMPC. But these are all So our, our forensic right? audit goes beyond mm -hmm. just that. So we know what we're, uh, we're targeting. So the fact that uh, NDC set up a hero fund, which is a, an institution which submit is different from an individual doling out three million dollars cash mm. they are two totally different okay. things uh, and as we indicated um, the next is to is for the integrity of gmpc that their board chairman's name is either cleared or okay. found adverse finding fine against him and being asked to step aside okay. for their own so they should welcome them for a second. Thank you very much. 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 We should acknowledge that GNPC's financial records are audited by Ernst & Young. Right? So there's no way someone can just do... Please, please, When you are there, you tell us how you funded your 20 million of the complex. Your accounts have been audited. Is that no case? Yeah. If there are issues coming up, yeah. A forensic audit is more of investigative audit. 
So we must know the difference. Okay. Thank you very much. So when, uh, when you're Honorable done, Adam Muta, when, when and of course, then? Honorable mm. Issa is Hussein. No, then Honorable Issa Hussein, we'll come back. We'll go for a quick, a quick break right break. now. When we come back, we'll be uh, looking at other stories. So do stay tuned to Breakfast Daily. Remember to join us with the hashtag Breakfast Daily or via WhatsApp on... 0550585832. 0550585832. Stay tuned to Breakfast Daily. It's engaging, detailed, and loaded with factual and incisive analysis. It's The Big Issue, your preferred Saturday morning news and current affairs analysis program on City TV. Tune in this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. and hear the newsmakers discuss the top issues for the week. At that time, at that time, Charlotte was complex. I'm not defending Charlotte. I'm, 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 I'm talking about the way we are, we behave like hypocrites and ostriches this country. At that time, she was a, a perfect person. It's The Biggest You with Sela Madonu on City TV, this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. Live music, interviews, poetry, and more with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. Join Kojo Akoto Boateng for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM. Okay, welcome back to Breakfast Daily, and we are still joined by two honourable members of Parliament, Honourable Adam Akilu and of course Honourable Issa Fuseini. Now we are jumping straight to our next story: uh, EC workers drag Charlotte Osei uh, to special prosecutor. And uh, well, we, we got wind of this, I think, last week that this mm -hmm. would be done, and it has been done. There was well, okay, let me just read this. Um, reading from page twenty of the Daily Graphic, it says. Workers of the Electoral Commission who petitioned President Nanado Danque Kufado for removal of Mrs. Charlotte Osei as the chairperson of the EC have decided to drag her to the office of the special prosecutor. And um, they have accordingly called on special prosecutor Mr. Martin Amidu to take up the case and consider the possibility of prosecuting Mrs. Charlotte Osei for procurement infractions, breach of trust and conflict of interest, which they say are also criminal in nature and worthy of prosecution. I'll start with you, Honorable for Adam Mutakilu, on this particular <laughs> Don't run away from me. Let me go. Let me go. Don't run away from me. Why are they sending it to the special prosecutor? Hmm. Why not? Why are they sending it to special prosecutor? It should be sent to who? The Attorney General? It is because it has not been proven that he has breached procurement oh. breaches. Oh, but that has been proven. It's not proven hmm. until court of competent jurisdiction says yes. We have to be very clear with that. Mm -hmm. That is why oh. even Kelvin GVG, we have issues. Kelney. Kelney GVG, we have issues. And it is being taken to court mm -hmm. to prove beyond reasonable that. doubt that they have breached procurement issues. Mm -hmm. That we must set it. Set it. No, honorable, the proof no. beyond reasonable doubt is when you are in a criminal court. The, fi the findings, these are findings, 
made by the committee, these were not to find criminal, mm. or these were not criminal charges brought before the I'm, committee's I'm job. Going, why is okay. it taken to the special prosecutor? For criminal sanctions to be imposed, I believe. Through prosecution? Yes. That is the point. Mm. Now, the first thing is that this procurement breaches since this government came to power has gone on and we've raised those red flags over a period. Mm. The first one started with uh, $2.25 billion mm -hmm. bond that was issued by Ken, uh, the finance minister, mm. yeah. which we call the Ken bond. <laughs> <laughs> the processes to securing, the processes to securing that bond was not followed. Security and Estate Committee Board wasn't even formed to approve it. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You're okay. It went to Sraj. Sraj admitted that the processes were not duly followed. It's a breach. Very good breach. Then, nothing happens at the end of the day. The finance minister was not asked, oh, you've breached proc the procurement processes, so step aside. The president grace it by coming to parliament to tell the whole world that he's the best finance minister. Best finance minister. We have issues with uh, Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company. We'll be coming now with our report. The, the Minister of Energy hasn't made that available. Mm -hmm. Where 26 million Ghana cities contract was awarded. No board approval, no public procurement authorities approval. Issues, the board raised queries on that and query the CEO to, rep mm. to explain Francis, yeah. Yeah, to the board why such a transaction took place without the board's approval. Even if it has been done before the board was formed, mm -hmm. it should be brought back to the mm. uh, board to, to ratify. ratify it. At, at the end of the day, the president rather dissolved the board and left the CEO. That calls into question. This, the board had been dissolved. The report as we speak today has not been made available to us. So where the CEO stays. Then in another case, oh, procurement breaches have been made. Oh, you step aside. Then... Uh, let's look for a new person. So you see the inconsistency in pres uh, uh, President Anna Akufuado's decision. And that calls for worry. Now, in terms of the special prosecutor, that is the purpose for which he's, he's, he's been, uh, we passed the law and he's been appointed. They should take it to it. They will look at the merit of the case. And they decide this 275 bars, they Indicated they will prosecute. Yeah. They will look into it. That is the the, 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 the work that and Ghana. So you agree there's nothing Ghana, wrong with taking it to oh, the special If you prosecutor. feel that I'm not okay. satisfied with this, I'm taking it to the special prosecutor. So be it. Because at the end of the day, is getting Ghana on the right path. Okay. So but the problem we have right is the selective process uh, decision taken by the president in respect to who is being dismissed for breaching, alleged breaches in procurement, uh, uh, the Public Procurement Act. Mm. It's what is a cause for what? These allegations by the minority, has the minority considered taking these to the special prosecutor? We are, we'll come up with our report in terms of the Ghana Cylinder. Do you have reports and media board. relations? No. Have you considered taking these to the, the special prosecutor? First of prosecutor? all, we have to make it available to the, uh, the people of Ghana. And then after that, we, pro, we pro, uh, proceed. Just like this one, it took some time. The president decided, okay, the bridge, he, she has breached, which is yet to be uh, proven beyond reasonable doubt. And that is why it's being sent there. Hmm. And if it is proven, this one, that, then he dissolved the board. So uh, there's some inconsistency, and the president seemed to grace some uh, corruption or alleged corrupt activities here. And then say, oh, I'm fighting corruption. This one I have to add. That inconsistency bring, brings 
and uh, you lose trust on the face of uh, many people. Thank okay. Honorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I would disagree with him. I, I think the president is very consistent. And when you look at Section 58 of our Constitution, that's not for one's um, 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 and downplay the executive powers of the president. Those presidents or whether SEC board was in place when we did a 2.5 billion poll. For, with, with your permission, let me just read section 58. Section 1 says, the executive authority of Ghana shall vest in the president and shall be ex exercised in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. Section 2, the executive authority of Ghana shall extend to the execution and maintenance of this constitution and all laws made under or continue, continued enforced by this constitution. Section 3. Clause 3. Clause 3. Mm -hmm. Subject to the provisions of this constitution, the functions conferred, functions conferred on the president by clause one of this article may be exercised by him either directly or through officers subordinate to him. May be exercised by him directly or through officers appointed subordinate to him. So in instances where there are no boards in place, the president has the power to exercise his executive authority. And the fact that we didn't have a board in place in SEC and we needed to do a very important transaction, as was uh, what, what our, our brothers on the other side have been calling the Ken Bond, does not mean that the state should come is, to, is, is to, that, to... Is that article you, you just read? Is that, is, that, is that, that article you just read the justification for the SEC board not being not, in place? It is not a justification. Mm. Because ideally, the, ideally, see, the board should be in place. But in the absence not ideally, of ideally, lawfully, the board should the be in place. In the absence of the board, what I'm saying is the president has a right to exercise his executive authority. That's your opinion. That could lead to that financial is, that, that is, loss. That is, that, is what, that, that is what our constitution okay. says. No, that's no, not what our constitution that is what says. Our that's constitution your understanding it. of that constitution. That's my understanding of it. That's his understanding let me, let me, of it, I think. your opinion. At the clause 3 says, subject to the provisions of this constitution, the functions conferred on the president by clause 1 of this article may be exercised by him either directly or through officers subordinated to him. Yeah, but have you the seen... president appoints boards. Sorry, sorry. It is his, his prerogative to appoint whoever he wants on the board. In the absence of the board, the president and the board is 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 honorable, uh, says, honorable, so honorable to be fair. The president who exercises a function no, either no. to exercise by the president. Honorable, let's not go there. You see, to be fair, the clause three is saying that the functions of this article. So you need to look at the functions. It's to one. No, the functions as listed in that article to be able to this, know. This, this is the executive authority no. of Ghana, which no. is vested in the no. president. No. 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 This is the executive honorable, authority in Ghana, so, which is vested in a president. Honorable, it will be dangerous for let's, us let's to go accept on. that let's, let's, let's as to the meaning of the position. <laughs> okay, let, let's that improve. That's my understanding of it, and I stand by it. Okay, proceed. Let's move to this um, EC issue. I, 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 I think that um, lots of us have been vindicated. The NDC and the minority started by saying the petitioners were faceless. They weren't known. And this petition had gone to the presidency signed by some ghost or people who were non existent. And as the petitioners have held an event yesterday, and now we know who the petitioners are. We went through the constitutional pro <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. A committee was set up, the chief justice would have decided there was a prima facie. Uh, to be investigated, the committee investigated, he brought their report to the president, the president has done what the constitution requires of him. Mm -hmm. And now if they want to pursue the criminal aspects of this, I think that it's in their right to do it. And they are doing it within the confines of the law. It is not something that I'll sit here and no, we as a party, NPP, or the New Patriotic Party, we are not party to this. Where the president is performing his function as the president of the of the, the of Ghana, okay. and he's executing whatever executive powers and whatever is expected of him under okay. the constitution. Case closed. Okay. This has been taken to the special prosecutor. If if if, if or well, I mean, who also has um, a year under the agency to have prosecutorial powers, 
If they decide to prosecute it, so be it. If they find something that was untold and they decide to prosecute it, obey. But I, I support the process because I think it's been done in the confines of the law. And that is the only way we can. We, we can. We okay, can we'll, we'll, in, move in, in, on, we'll move on to. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our next story. This, his article. No, that's his understanding. <laughs> that's his understanding. Is no, I'm not a lawyer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is, I cannot opinion. interpret and explain. No, but, but the way you have done have, it too. We don't have to. No, we, we, we have told you that that cannot be the position of the law. That cannot be the position of the law. I don't have to be a lawyer. We are moving on to the next story. But I find it, don't you find it a bit vindictive when the recorder of the Senate 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 of the to look into it and once it's forwarded to the attorney general for po possibility of prosecution well you're saying that the the, the committee what well, didn't find anything any adverse any adverse um, um, um the domains. adverse findings were for her to be removed okay. but then not for prosecution that was they a recommendation there. for her to be removed was a recommendation exactly but not to be prosecuted the, but the, then no, the, i have not seen the report no i i have seen the yeah, recommendation but, and but i'm telling are you, you telling me that in the report it stated that or in black and white that she shouldn't be prosecuted there were there were there were four recommendations yeah four solid recommendations yeah. removal of charlotte to say Removal of Amadou Sule mm -hmm. and removal of George Nopoku mm -hmm. And the fourth one was for Amadou Sule to return certain monies back to the coffers of the East. No, where did it say in the report that it shouldn't be no prosecuted? No prosecution was mentioned that, in the that, report. Does that put them in some immune situation that they shouldn't be prosecuted? No, please. For we're, just, doing we're, 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 we're just speaking to the position of the minority, which seems to be like the, the, the NPP or the ruling government seems to be a bit vindictive, so. vindictive in respect of saying. I think that we should move on. We should, we should, we should, we should move on. Is that what I'm saying? We can't find people, it is people put in positions of trust. Mm. Yeah. We can't that. find people put in position it of is, trust. It, like a commissioner of the electoral we, commissioner or the chair uh, of the electoral commission and they do some wrongdoings and they're simply removed from them. office. Meanwhile, the guy from Abeka who sells a goods or, or who is going to go to the market to take is prosecuted. What's up? Honorable, I think I understand that Mr. Akilo will respond. Has caused Ghana more than any other thing. They have gone to court. Look, when, when you I don't think one let, person let, 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 let me come back. 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 Let me and for infringing some procurement here and there, it happens. But it's not but right. Measures, no. How you put measures in place to ensure that there are punitive measures when proven is very critical. When proven by any competent court of jurisdiction, then it's very critical. A person like EC should go to the extent at which it disrupted or it will disrupt future elections. That is the core function of an issue, to be able to ensure that we think that at the end of the day, that report did not point to how it affected the 2016 election of which President Nana Akufuado has been elected and he's will hopefully will heartedly <laughs> okay. embrace it. I think we we'll just go to our next story. I, 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 I think that's that. We should go no, to the next story. Thank you very much. Honorable yeah, members. Yeah, 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 Honorable members. Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> 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 We're in court now. 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 we Sugar factory, mm. sugar cane being sold to Akpreteshi distillers. Mm. So we broke this story yesterday. It is rather disappointing twist of events as Commander Sugar Factory is now selling sugar cane at its 125-acre seedling plantation to distillers of the local alcoholic beverage popularly known as Akpreteshi. The $35 million Indian Exim Bank loan factory remains dormant due to lack of funds so a source there tells us that the factory um which the the the, the sugar cane some of which have lasted two years was supposed to be used 
for planting in less than nine months. But the the content because there's no water they've not been able to make uh sugar cane that is suitable mm. for for us to eat so they are just selling it to the it has to the water level yes mm. that will enable it to process sugar yeah no. So, um, and, and this is a nation that, I mean, this isn't anything new. Komaru created a lot of factories, government after government. We create factories, we let it go. And then we hear these stories. And now we are, we're still waiting for our over 200 factories. Oh, you're waiting for your over 200 factories. And I, I can tell you that it uh, won't be too long. <laughs> and what will be their fate if this, if this factory... I, I, I think it's time we start with I think that, I think yeah. that uh, it, it takes a lot of skill to be able to put some of this uh, in place. We remember the story of Commenda Sugar Factory when the, 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 the factory was actually commissioned when the source of raw materials to even feed the factory was unknown. And um, it had to take another facility to go to Parliament for us to prepare for this uh, uh, $35 million dollar facility yeah. for outgoers and for the factory itself to secure a certain percentage of its inputs. I think that we, we did things the reverse way. And we, on our side, did complain at the time. You set up a factory with all the fanfare. You go, you commission. You see, Olonka uh, tin of sugar. Let's and try and politicize well. this. On I'm, not, I'm not putting politics on. I'm not okay. putting a spin on this. But okay. we all saw it on TV with all the pomp and pageantry, with all the fanfare. We go and for I mean, all the sugar importation is going to end. We commission a nicely sparkling factory. And then we are waiting for the process. Yes, and then we are told that mm. you put out the factory before you think of the source of raw materials that is going to feed the factory. Why, why is this done? When, where is the logic in this? And then you get the facility and now the factory is all producing because water content in the sugar cane. Was any feasibility study done as the quality or the, 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 the variety even of sugar cane that was planted in the area? That we applied it those 35 million cities to. Whether they had the, the right sugar content, the right water content, whatever. Whether it met the, even the specific equipment put in to process the sugar cane into, into. And so this is where we end. It is not unique. We've seen other factories like that. Look, go, go to Wenchi Tomato Factory. Go to Pualugu. Sometimes even the varieties of the input that we, we produce. This outgrower scheme. It has never successfully survived around here because we don't respect contracts. We don't respect contracts. You get into a contract with an out, out grower for the person to produce, to feed. Let somebody come in and give the out grower one city more. They are going to sell a produce to that person to the detriment of you who are provided with the, the inputs. And so it was, it's advisable anywhere in this country and across Africa for a factory to be able to secure a certain percentage of its input. So a factory like Commander, you expect that at least 30% of its input will be directly under its control. And then you can depend on 70% on outgrowers or something. But this was not done. The factory was put up. We, 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 we've we've heard the complaints of the past. We and yet, we've we've heard heard the complaints here. of the past. Does we, the NPP government intend to save the Commander Sugar Factory? Oh, of course, it's a national city. And, and I mean, it will be, it will be very um, 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 unwise for us not to especially in this day and age, when we are also going to, or we are planning on putting on factories, like, like the commander to, for import substitution, whatever it is. Look, now look at our currency. Okay. We have to produce what we eat. And if we can produce all the sugar, you'll be amazed at our sugar importation bill. I mean, it would be very unwise for us not to. But we have to also take stock of where we have come from and what brought us to this stage. And so we can take corrective measures to ensure that Commenda is, is working. And I, okay. I, 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 it's good that this is, this is in the news. It's Thank good you. that the city is broken the news. Person, I am sure person, that the ministry promos. is taking this up. Oh, okay. some of us Thank you. Thank and you. And you. ensure that the Commenda factory that we, is supposed to produce on, on, the sugar on, 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 on track. First and foremost, we must erase the erroneous notion that you set up you put out the raw material before you set up a factory. Mm -hmm. It's not all the case. Oh. It depends the gestation period. Oh. If it is a tree crop, oh. that takes four or five years. Oh. You can't put up a factory. Oh. And you can't put up the factory before you plant. Mm -hmm. So you put a plantation there. Mm -hmm. And then if it is dealing with like sugarcane, mm -hmm. between six months and nine months, mm -hmm. 
is ready to process. Mm. You can't plant it when the plant will take two years to construct. So when, we, when you are one well, year, don't when, when we are when one year, when, when you are doing, doing it. it. <laughs> so <laughs> there were two facilities that were to come. One for the establishment of the factory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were already existing outgrowers. Mm -hmm. So if the, uh, the factory is completed, you make it use of the outgrower. There is another package. And you know this 125 acres is not a, a farm. It's the seedlings. Mm -hmm. So that it will be transplanted into a bigger. But because this government came and refused to continue with the good work done by former President Mahama, they, they, they have overgrown. So if you look at it, it's not like 125 uh, sugarcane plantation uh, farm. No, no. Now, when the factory got completed, the outgrowers were there. By now, government should have continued mm -hmm. because the hard side, which is the factory, is already there. You make sure that you make good use of the sugarcane. Assuming even the 125, the plant is still there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you, when it was maturing period, can the Minister of Trade and Industry give approval for them to use it to process some bags of sugar? But rather give approval for it to be sold for accreditation. These are issues. I realized the President went to Volta region and commissioned a project mm -hmm. and said that as President, all projects led by previous administration. He will continue with it. Meanwhile, we have several of them. Uh, Commander Sugar Factory. When the factory had been completed, at a cost of almost 36, about $36 million, yeah. that one is not his priority. He went to, now he's realized that uh, the prison, uh, President Mama did some project is complete. He went to BA and said that President Mama's projects are ghost projects, which was captured in the deadlies. So he's now come to the realization that President Mama has done some projects that he needed to be completed. We want to remind him, Commander Sugar Factory, we just need the raw materials. He should ensure that the plant works. It will create diverse job opportunities for the people of Western Region and Ghana as a whole. Okay, we'll read a few messages Central and then uh, I think we'll I'll just Central read one or two messages. I, I, I think that I, I okay. agree with you. So, uh, I just want to read a few messages here. A message here from uh, Bilin To Abdal says, if this extravagant spending by the government, from, from the, by the governing party in power is not condemned, the impunity and corruption we are preaching about will be thrown into the gutters. Uh, is the basis is well anyway he said it's the basis of corruption uh it is how we protect our public peers as we promised i pity politicians and another message from uh, theo martina martha ishan so, so assuming the money was used to purchase ambulances would there have been these stories about corruption and vote buying um this present minority is embarrassing the country with their baby approach to every <laughs> issue this is coming from Martha Ishan. Another message just came in from Walanyo in Akwitia. Yes, okay. yes, go ahead. So uh, Walanyo says, NDC should promise Ghanaians that as they are also going for their regional and national delegates conference to elect the executives, no money or anything in that nature will change hands as they are criticizing uh, money, cra money crazy, or maybe meant money crazy, probably in NPP, that they will not go to their conference with cars, but rather motorbike, uh, Abubuya, Okada, <laughs> and uh, will be them. Dramatic. Yeah, well, anyway, he says they shouldn't come back with an excuse that MPP also did it. Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting message. Anyway, so uh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. we'll take final comments. Yeah. yeah, I think that the president. As what he mentioned, there are several hospitals that need to be commissioned. He did not go by personally to commission it. Hmm. He could get district officers, regional officers, or the national officers to commission it on his behalf. Mm -hmm. Because we have a health center just at Ofako mm -hmm. completed over years. Mm -hmm. The equipment and everything is sitting there. There's no equipment in there. There is what no equipment in there. We have. 
Legon Hospital. He should fast track it. He has promised this month. Mm -hmm. We are waiting to see. It's already 10th today. Yes. Some 21 days okay. left. We are waiting. He should open it. There are several projects that have been completed, not ongoing, completed and need to be commissioned and utilized by the people of Ghana. He should ensure that he delegates his authority to the lower level to commission and ensure that Commander Sugar Factory works. It's very critical. It's a big asset to the national development. If you consider the import level of sugar is so high, and therefore if this could be import substitution industry, it's a welcome idea. And I think he should relook at it and ensure that it works. Okay. Finally, um, let me let me just make um, some quick intervention on some erroneous intervention, like the Ofanko Health mm. um, um, Center. What happened is that um, within the construction of the Achimata Ofanko stretch of the road, there was an existing health facility that was broken down because of the construction of the road. So, as part of the package within the road construction um, um, process, mm -hmm. this center was put up. And sometimes because of lack of coordination within the sectors. So it was within the road construction phase uh -huh, or it was part of it. Place. Where right? And so this facility was put up. On the blind side of the Ministry of Health. There is no so the, the health facility was put up on the blind because side of the Ministry of Health. Because it was packaged as part of the road construction. I'm saying this on authority from the no. Ministry of Health. No. No, and I so we have issues like that. But it's been brought it. to the attention of the ministry. Look, let's look at the University of Ghana um, Medical Center. I dispute this. Idea. Yesterday, I sit on the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, a loan was brought uh, for the second phase of the University of Ghana Hospital. It doesn't stop the first and phase it, from it working. Inclusive in that loan are consumables the for the health facility. Inclusive in there is continuous power um, and some facility for continuous power. And for a hospital of that magnitude, without those facilities in place, there is no way it is going to operate to a level that we want it to, to operate. No. So these are not... I can give you the documents. I'm sorry, no. the health minister they, said they, that the health in minister July... Has given several yeah. Because in July... Excuse in July, in July, in July why it is not that operating? Facility, not one. That facility is not going to Fair operate like... It was owned by so it's going to operate? That facility... Are you disputing what the health minister oh, said? Yes, don't even go there because... No. An SPV was incorporated, and the process of incorporating that SPVs, they was it was it was done as if it's some individuals that own no, the facility, no, and that no. also brought brought in no, no, the, no. The, 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 the issue about who was in charge of management or who owned it. generator issue came up. It is not a standby <laughs> generator. It no, was a facility for continuous supply of power. No. I will provide you those, those documents if you want. It didn't Just have a standby generator. It came to generator. the finance committee for us to consider that loan. Without the, the phase second two, phase, the first phase. Is unable to operate no. like we want that facility to operate. Just, that facility is not going to operate to like at the Bakra no, um, um, no, Polyclinic, no, no. where it's an OPD, anybody works in there. Let it's a clear. specialist facility and it's supposed to even improve upon what health tourism sorry, uh, and uh, serve uh, the whole uh, sorry, really quickly, sorry, just a straight question. Mm -hmm. You're on the finals question. committee yes, and said yesterday something came up in respect yes. of the University of Ghana Medical yes. Center. Are you then saying that what the Minister of Health said that it would be operating this month in July? Operating, in July. Not happen? operating in July. Operating in July, it's not necessarily, it is not necessarily as having the level of operation, Ooh. getting people at the sort of health tourism that we expect. Don't, don't. But, but we'll start running. Our the equipment that no. is ready will start running. No, no, no. Staff will be employed. They will start run gradually until we mm. hit the peak. Not until we get all this, oh. including consumables. How is a hospital oh. able to? I will provide you with this document if you doubt me. They need, I don't they need this 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 million dollars to do it. But let me correct something. Please. Yes, that facility came to, to the government yesterday. I was in the no, company. The that that a room being constructed and an existing structure being rehabilitated. Normally, we don't say renovated. Rehabilitated means additional infrastructure. And the Minister of Health is not aware. I have Damongo Fufuso Solar Road. It is a road with auxiliary works, with all health facilities. The district health directorate is supposed to coordinate because when they are going on visit on the road, it's not only road. So there will be a representative from the health ministry, from the district health directorate, and it's supposed to report to the region. 
and the region report to national. So when was the when was the Health Facility okay. complete? Thank you very much. When was the Health Facility complete? Thank you very much, honourable members. No, honourable Isa Fuseni, thank you so much for coming. And uh, well, honourable Isa Fuseni is, of course, on the Finance Committee of Parliament, and he's also the Member of Parliament for Kankwe North, not forgetting the honourable Member of Parliament for Damongo, who's also the Minority Spokesperson on Energy and Mines, and a person of honourable Adam Mutawakilu. And um, well, thank, thank you so thank much you for coming, so much gentlemen. For joining us. Uh, up next, we are going to learn about um, indigenous local foods that are going extinct. So, what are we going to do about saving our local food? What's your favorite local food, by the way? Banku. Banku and tilapia, yes. or I like tilapia, but I like beef. <laughs> Banku and beef. <laughs> <laughs> That's this okay. Cocoa, okay. Not, not. I don't deal with the pepper and banku. No, I need with soup. Ah. Mm -hmm. Cocoa soup. So don't go anywhere. Remember to join the conversation with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. <laughs> Spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day. If you tweet it, we'll read it. We might just even Skype you. Just, you know, no matter your situation, you can rise to the top. Absolutely. You really and can. And it's interesting that he wrote this article on the 17th of June. And on the 18th of June, yesterday, he actually scored two goals Woo! in the Belgium World Cup meet. 30 minutes is all it takes, so use the hashtag 30minutes on social media to catch our attention. Join the most interactive social media TV show weekdays at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Wherever the weekend sporting action happened, we will bring it to you here on Scorecard. Every goal, every dunk, every punch, the winning strides, and the winning volleys. Come, international media. He said, look, wait. Sit and eat. Let me have a meal with my people. And I think that that's the same cool, it's the same organization he brings to the field every time I've seen him play. He looks to me like somebody who's played over 50 cups already. Okay. But this guy has barely played over 25 cups for the national team. All of the weekend's action in one place. Scorecard. Every Sunday at 8 p.m. Bronx on CTTV. Hey family, my name is Joe Metal and you're watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Keep watching, don't go nowhere. Every Thursday night on City TV, you're welcome to join women from different backgrounds and opinions as they weigh in on your relationship issues. Watch Sister Sister as the ladies get real with issues about love, marriage, betrayal, sex, dating, trust, finances, and more. Sometimes some of the guys are like, oh no, they want to wait before they get married. So, so they are looking for more responsibility. Oh, I'm saying, I'm holding on, lady. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if she does all the kiss and all of that? Still nothing. That's it. If he really wants you like that, you see it. So, join Jessica and her sisters for City TV's All Women Talk Show, Sister Sister, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Also, live on 97.3 City FM.
What a lovely sound. I, I really enjoy his music. And uh, we're going to learn a lot about him much later on. And we, we're, we're very grateful um, to having him here with us. Uh, but before the break, I told you guys that we were going to learn about our local food and how to preserve them because some of them are going extinct. And so I'm joined by Dr. Alberta Bonzi Simpson. Alberta Bonzi Simpson. She's going to help us understand ways to um, what what indigenous foods are going extinct and and what to do to preserve them. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good, good. So every time I think of indigenous food, I just think of just eating them. I never think of any of them going extinct. Do we have any that are no longer available or might no longer exist? A number of them are no longer available, especially in the urban areas and okay. even in the villages. And a number of them would also go extinct if we don't do anything about it. Mm. Basically because our lifestyle is changing. Mm. So we would have to find a way of preserving our dishes. Okay. Now, what, what, which ones are no longer available, I, at least in Accra? I did a focus group discussion in 13 ethnic areas, including the Northern, the Ahanta, the Volta, the Ga, and almost every part of the country. And I gathered over 200 Ghanaian dishes. In fact, some of them, the names are so difficult to mention. <laughs> it's so difficult to mention them. But I just realized that we were not used to more than 10 of them. Yeah. That was the difficult part. And most of them used our local indigenous ingredients, mm. beans, corn, cassava, the leaves of cassava, uh, and all of that. And they are so nutritional, they are so cheap, they are so readily available, but we do not have them anymore. Mm -hmm. And we don't even know how to cook them anymore. Mm -hmm. I am sure if your mom knew how to cook 10 Ghanaian dishes, you know how to cook five. Yes. And your daughter <laughs> will know how to cook three. And as it goes down, uh, it will end up that nobody knows how to cook them anymore. Mm. What, what sparked your interest in this, in this topic? Honestly, my interest was not so much in Ghanaian dishes in our homes. Okay. It was in Ghanaian dishes in our tourism-oriented institutions, such as our restaurants and our hotels. Okay. I traveled all the way to the north, and I said I wanted to Uzafi for lunch. And they said they didn't have to Uzafi. Why? So, is it that you don't have to Uzafi? They said you have to make 24 hours request before it can be made. Wow. If I want it now, then I should go into the market under a certain big tree. There's a woman sitting <laughs> there goodness. and all of that, you know. And assuming if I was a foreigner. Then you would just then, stay at yes, the hotel. Even as a Ghanaian, I found it too laborious to yeah. go through all of that just to get to Uzafi. So I said, okay, what do you have? They said fried rice. I said, I won't come <laughs> I all the way from Accra <laughs> to not to come and eat fried rice. Okay, bring the fried rice. And I had some emutuo, nice emutuo fried rice with... <laughs> carrots, <laughs> carrots in it. So I, I, I was just telling the one I was with that this is a mutu. That's what they do best. So why don't they just give me a mutu yeah. rather than trying to force to prepare fried rice that they cannot really prepare? Hmm. So that developed my interest in, in Ghanaian dishes, especially in our tourism-oriented institutions, because our lifestyle, our, our social life is changing. Mm -hmm. Originally, everybody ate at home. Yeah. Your father will go to work, and uh, uh, most often than not, your mom is a house, uh, housewife. housewife. She will pack a basket of food for him and all of that, or he will come home and come and eat. But now everybody is eating out. Mm -hmm. So if we want to really preserve our Ghanaian dishes, we have to take them out of the home into our tourism-oriented establishment or our eateries, out-of-home eating establishments. Why do you think we don't have it? Do you think that maybe perhaps the people in the north thought um, tourists will prefer fried rice over chosa feet? What, what are the causes of this? Excellent question. In fact, a number of researchers have come out to say that ethnic, eth, uh, indigenous people think that their cuisine is not good enough ah. to serve it to visitors. Hmm. 
So when you go and visit someone in their house, they would want to give you something that they don't normally eat at home. Mm -hmm. So maybe they are eating banku and uh, mutu. When they see you coming, they start preparing jollof and chicken and all and of that because they think that that is what you would want. So that argument has been made. Another argument has also been made that should the wish of every guest be our command, in that instance, then where is the acculturation and the exchange of culture? Mm -hmm. Because people will go to a place just to experience different food, different flavors, different environments, if it is the same as what I have at home. And mind you, most of the time, it's a substandard mm -hmm. because there is no chef in Wa or Bulga or Tamale or Accra or uh, 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 Takrade that can cook fried rice more than the, uh, the Chinese. Yeah. So if a Chinese comes to visit you and you give the Chinese fried rice, <laughs> most often than not, they would wonder what it is that you are serving them. Yeah. So uh, that is what I think is the problem. We don't think our food is good enough. We always want to try and give people more than, even if it's the same soup. Originally, I will use uh, herrings mm -hmm. or uh, periwinkles or something, but immediately I'm getting a visitor, I need beef, I need this, I need that. We always want to serve visitors something different from what we are, we, we, we are eating. And it is our mentality. We have to start liking our food. We have to start positioning our food. We have to start being proud of our food. If not, we won't eat it and we will not... If you think I'm lying, immediately people get money. What do they discard? The first thing they discard. I don't know. <laughs> is, is, is their food? eating habits? Yeah, their eating habits, yes. If they, if they were eating, I don't know, roasted, roasted yams, now they want fried yes. rice and, and pizza. And it was <laughs> very, 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 very interesting in Kumasi when I was doing the interview. In fact, the interviews were in Accra, Takrade, and Kumasi. One of them said, you do an air local, 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 do do. Into the bar hotel, and you say me baby local, local. You know, and and that's how he put it. He was. <laughs> but I do agree. Though. I think a, a month ago, a friend of mine wanted us to go out and eat on a Sunday, and I said, "Oh, where are we going?" And he said, "Oh." We're going to eat watch. I said, I eat watch every day. You, <laughs> you know, can we taste some Indian food or, or, or something? And he's you know? like, oh no, is it that <laughs> watch your fufu? So yeah. I agree that uh, yes. sometimes we want to change. But also, looking at the table here, yes, I see that, for example, the banku and oko. Uh -huh. Everything is sourced locally. So mm -hmm. even when I'm consuming mm -hmm. something that is indigenous, mm -hmm. it's actually creating value mm -hmm. at every stage of the supply mm -hmm. chain. Because if the mm -hmm. corn is is, is, is 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 bought from a local farmer, the cassava, mm -hmm. it actually helps the economy. Mm -hmm. But if we have rice mm -hmm. and we are consuming Perfumed rice, rice. You have to qualify the rice. <laughs> <laughs> if we're if we're constantly consuming perfumed mm -hmm. rice at the expense of our locally produced rice, what are the economic implications? So you just mentioned rightly mm -hmm. so that as we move into a, a, maybe an, an, an upper level income mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. our taste, we, we change. We want mm -hmm. something imported. Mm -hmm. But what does, that, what does that do to the economy as a whole? A lot. Because as you have rightly said, there is this trickle down of economic value when you eat your local food. Because not only is the farmer benefiting, the market woman is benefiting. Even the Nikanika guy who is blending uh, the cassava. Yes, <laughs> is also benefiting. And we do not, there's something we call leakages in economics. We do not spend our hard earned currency outside importing foreign food. You see, so everything remains in the country. Now that we have talked about the economic part of it, just look at the food. You see, what we do not realize is that our one pot food makes it extremely nutritious. Mm. If I am going to eat pasta, a very popular one I don't want to mention. Oh, you can. <laughs> when I first, for example, I went to college abroad. Yes. And only broke students ate noodles 
Please. So I equate when I see noodles, I'm and thinking you're food. broke and you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. That's why you're eating mm -hmm. noodles. And then I come. Home. And and it is so deficient because most of the time you just fry egg and add and then or, you're done. or something like that. It's so deficient. But look at this food. You have crabs, you have meat, Wale. you have fish, you have wele, and, and you see the varied texture. You are chewing a bit, you are swallowing a bit, you, you, you are licking a bit. You know, the, the crap you, 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 you are trying. You are sucking a you bit. You are sucking a bit, you know. It, 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 it adds to the total experience, meal experience. And mm -hmm. it's something, and sometimes you have okra in it, you have garden eggs in the same stew. Yes. So you have vegetables, you have your red oil, which is vitamin A, you have the crabs, the calcium, and the vitamin B, and you have your almighty, uh, carbohydrates you know in it and i'm saying almighty because it's a big thing for us yeah we if, eat I, a lot if of you carbs. ask any Ghanaian what are you going to eat most likely they will say banku fufu rice yum, yum. <laughs> but if you ask a foreigner our conceptualization of food is different mm -hmm. if you ask a foreigner what are you going to eat they will say fish yeah. chicken beef pork mm -hmm. And every other thing is secondary, yeah. you know. So that is the difference. And that I have realized is the difficulty of hotels. Mm. How to blend the Ghanaian dishes with their a la carte menu. Mm -hmm. Because you go to a hotel or a restaurant, a, a, a white tablecloth restaurant, of course. And then you would find the fish section, yeah. the beef section, the pork section. Where will you place this okra stew? <laughs> because it has everything. Yeah. It has fish, it has meat, it has crab, it has, it is a stew. And then the main focus is not on the okra stew, it's on the banku, the banku. <laughs> so where, where do you where put do the you banku? <laughs> you, you get it. So most of the time it's all banku and any other soup of your choice, either okra stew or ibnebuno or benkwai or whatever it is, you know, that is the mainstay. So that is, for us to be able to incorporate these dishes well into our hotel and restaurant system, we have to reconceptualize. Yeah. I completely agree, and I think we've talked about the food a bit and the research you've done, um, but let's look at the, the, the economy, right? How big is the tourism industry? I went to Koforidria over the weekend, and I couldn't find anything to eat. I had to buy uh, coconut on the roadside because there was, I just couldn't find anything. Is there potential there for, for the country to make a lot of money just exploring food tourism alone? You know, originally... Agriculture used to be the mainstay mm -hmm. of our economy. Right now, it is services. Yeah. And out of the services, aside transport and other things, uh, uh, transport and telecommunication and other things, out of the 10 services that Ghana engages in, tourism is the fourth. Wow. So it is no mean an economic venture for this country to explore. Now our Kakum is tired. We are not maintaining it. Look at the road that leads to Kakum. Our uh, 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 castles are tired. You know, we started with Pana first and this and that. There is so much you can stretch. You see, tourism is dynamic, not static. Mm -hmm. When the same people come in, it's always the castle. It's always the Kakum. It's always the castle. They At some point, they again. won't come again. And all those people who are interested in the castle and the uh, uh, Kakum walkway, would have exhausted their curiosity. Now you have any more people coming. So how else do you change? So when you go to tourism-oriented countries, it is always under construction, trying to do something new, something new. Even Dubai right now is moving from the hotels and other things into health tourism, where they are trying to explore how to make uh, Dubai the health capital of the world. So why don't we use our food? Mm -hmm. It helps us, it benefits us, and people are now, uh, 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 Georgia is revising or re uh, reviewing and reviving its indigenous dishes mm -hmm. to get into food uh, tourism. Originally, when you go into the literature, you don't find anything about food tourism. Mm -hmm. But now all countries are interested. So if we want to have a place in tourism, why don't we explore it? We have so many, so many interesting, nutritious dishes that... Uh, 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 we can, you, and the interesting part of it is the economic benefit is not only for Ghana, but it's also for Ghanaians outside Ghana. Oh. Because when people come to Ghana and they taste our food and they think it's so nice, it builds ethnic restaurants or they patronize ethnic restaurants in other countries. So you go to America and there's a Ghanaian restaurant there. Yeah. 
They, they would want to remember their visit to Ghana. So they walk into Ghanaian restaurant and they want to brag, take their friends. This is what I ate. <laughs> this is called plantain. This is, this, this is that. You go to UK, you go to China. And that's what the Chinese have done. Yeah. That you have Chinese restaurants here that Ghanaians are willing and uh, excited to patronize. Because we go and trade there. We eat Chinese dishes. We come here, we want to experience this. So it also builds a market for those Ghanaians outside who would want to explore opening Ghanaian restaurants outside, mm -hmm. you know. So, so as for the benefits, the, the economic benefits, it's, it's empty. We, we can't even start talking about it. A, a, aside preserving a hard-earned foreign currency, keeping it here. I remember Achampong was saying we we'll grow what we eat and eat what we grow. That alone will cut down the amount of money we use in importing uh, uh, the noodles and the... the, 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 the um, Pastas, different yes. types of pastas, the rice, the, rice. The, the chicken, and all of those things. Originally, we have free-range birds. Eh? They are everybody's house. You have some goats and some birds. And now we don't have them anymore. Yeah. You know? So we, we've, we've looked into all of this, but I want us to also talk a bit about our mindset. Right? So I see we're wearing a beautiful African print shirt, but there are people out there who will say, once I become a doctor, I'm going to wear a suit because mm. now <laughs> my status has changed. Oh, yes. you know, so how do we fix our mindset to a point where we see what's indigenously ours and we are proud of it? And we don't have to always take what's not ours and equate some sort of prestige or excellence to it. Um, the first thing I'll say is that we have to do away with mediocrity. Immediately it comes to Ghanaian. The, game, the rules of the game change. Go and look at the harmonized standard of Ghana Tourism Authority. Four star or, or, or white tablecloth restaurants should serve foreign dishes, should have white tablecloth, <laughs> should be air conditioned, should be this, should be that. Go to local restaurants. It's there. I, unfortunately, I didn't bring the document. I should have been a quick back when brought the yes, document. Yes. <laughs> you go no, there we'll and it. Maybe said, we'll make an uh, it, should be, it. it can be a makeshift something with a, 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 something, a, what do we call a fence or something. So they have, you look at the standards for the, you have in, a the, at the continental table. dishes. <laughs> yes, and the standards they have Put. And they are the regulatory bodies. Mm -hmm. That is why our chobas are like that. Because when the GTA people go, they pass. Because they, 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 they don't expect much from them. They totally don't expect much. So we have to do away with mediocrity. Immediately you add Ghana to it. And it's not as if we are mediocre people. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to people's home, when they want to live continental, you see the home. Mm -hmm. When you go and it is Ghanaian, then you see the home too. <laughs> but I am so proud when I see sharks in say Soweto mm -hmm. and you enter the room they enter the room with a, a, a camera and it's neat it's well arranged so why do we always attach mediocrity the same thing with our food why will we even put the banku in polythene bag like this and serve it you won't find any by now and, and that is our job yeah. as academics in that area and suffice it to say uh, 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 food and hospitality, it is just recently that we are going to school plenty. Originally, really? you just go to the Polydu one, two, <laughs> yes, and that's it. <laughs> yes. Yes. There are very few of us. I'm, I'm curious how, how you chase that up, but let's, let's end mm -hmm. the... So, let's, let's it's, it's our job to, to, to rethink the presentation and even the recipes of our food, to make it more presentable, to make it something that has class yeah. like they will put it for for people to feel proud to eat it mm -hmm. and even the way we i went to a, a, an indian restaurant a very high class expensive indian restaurant this indian woman very pretty with her she came she bought her look she was eating with her hand <laughs> without excuse of uh, <laughs> uh, 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 you know she, she she just ate it mm -hmm. she was proud but why is it that when we wear suit or we get to a certain level, eating with our hands become a problem. So I'm, cu I'm really curious about your thoughts on this. Because people, a few very well-respected um, individuals of our society have critiqued the way we pound our fufu and, and are saying we shouldn't pound it that way. We should, we should innovate the way we, we make the fufu. What are your thoughts on that? I have stopped pounding a long time ago. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I don't even know where my mother is. When I was going to get married some 17 years ago, I took one. But I don't know where it is now. <laughs> Uh, now, people, I just blend my raw plantain and raw cassava, mm -hmm. and 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 work it out like I I, I am I am. You're they call it stair pressing. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't even know the word. That's why I was helping you with that. With the uh, you do like this. You do like this until it is cooked, and it's as good. As and and it. and uh, uh, it, you maintain its nutritional value. You also make it more hygienic. Mm. You make it, and it's nice. So when I hear people say me dear me penny ayawo me penny ayawo, and I'm wondering when will we progress from there? I don't remember the last time I had to pound uh, uh, palm nuts. Oh, I will yeah, just, just buy, buy the one in the tin. Let's reward innovation <laughs> and let other people make money. That is what the foreigners do. do yeah. and, and when I make my palm nut stew, if I don't tell you I made it from a tin, you, you won't, won't even know. see the difference. Okay, you so we, we've know. discussed the institutional level and how we need to have a higher standard for our local foods. But what, what part do we play in it as Ghanaians, as individuals? Should we be a bit more intentional? about the way we engage our indigenous food. Because you see, I have friends who will go to a TZ spot and they will just hide and Can just walk in there because it's, even the way it's positioned near the gutter, but you know, you it's see? really good. So how do we, how do we get there? You see, one researcher have, that I like so much, I like their arguments, have argued that sometimes local dishes can be an impediment yeah. to tourism and to consumption because of the traditional and local setting. Mm -hmm. People are not used to. So imagine someone who is not used to eating by the gutter. Mm -hmm. Now you want the person to eat an unfamiliar food in an unfamiliar environment. That is not better than the environment that yeah, he or she to. is used to. Then it becomes a problem. So I think if this, I don't think if anybody, I don't know if I'm doing an advert for somebody, but I don't think it's if, if anybody is walking into a place like Azmera to go and eat to Zafi, the mm -hmm. person will hide behind the hat. No. no, they want everybody to see that I am going because of the ambience and the, the class and everything. And that's why I said the starting point is for us to re remove mediocrity mm -hmm. and for GTA to review its, its statutes about uh, 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 the, the grading yeah. of restaurants and bring traditional restaurants up to meet the foreign white tablecloth restaurants, the grade one, two, and three restaurants. They should move. You know, they have grade one, grade two, grade three restaurants, and they have traditional restaurants. Wow. And traditional restaurants, it's below the grade one goes. restaurant, you know? And they should move it up. So before you can run a chop bar, there should be a minimum minimum setting before you can run it then people won't have to hide behind and that is different from street food street food is also That's different okay. you know so doc thank you so much any last words for us um what what can we do to to really get to a point where we're embracing all of our um, indigenous food a few days ago about two or three days ago i had some people over in the house and we just did an mpc party with cassava, yam, kukuyam, and plantain, and then some stews, gardeners, kuntumbi, and all, just that. And I remember one person's comment. He says it's so refreshing, yeah. so different. So we can start from our own small home, eat it, make a conscious effort to teach your children how to make it, and then serve it to your customers. Make your best Ghanaian dish. And it doesn't matter whether your guests are foreigners. Let them try what it is that we have. They will learn. We have something we call acquired taste. Sometimes you try something for the first time, you don't really like it because you don't know it, you've not tasted it before, your mind is rejecting it. But you try it the second time, the third time. By the time you realize you really love it. So let's insist on feeding people. Let's bombard them with <laughs> our food. To so a no. point where they will learn. My boys went to boarding house and the headmaster said, we'll teach them how to eat dining hall food. <laughs> so let's teach them how to, <laughs> how to eat Ghanaian food. <laughs> okay. Thank Dr. You. Alberta Bonzi. My Simpson. missus is very important. Yes. Okay. Dr. <laughs> Mrs. Alberta Bonzi Simpson. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us You're this welcome. morning. Spiky, I You're hope. Welcome. Well, before. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Spicy. <laughs>
<laughs> I hope you've learned so much, and I, I'm looking forward to learning more about our super talented um, local flu fluist, <laughs> um, Ansong Junior. Okay. Well, um, uh, I, 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 I love the fact that you know uh, Dr. Bonzi Sim, Dr. Mrs. Alberta <laughs> Bonzi Simpson was very particular about the fact that you know you should be proud of what you're eating. Uh, she saw an Indian lady in, a, in an Indian restaurant eating with her hands, and she was so she fell in love with it, and she wants people to use their hands all the time. I'm like, you know, you're preaching to the choir. The fact that you're talking to, she eats with her hands all the time. If she had her own way, she would drink tea with her fingers. Like <laughs> she has a way of using her hands to eat anything. Anyway, well, it's time to have a quick conversation with uh, the young man who's been playing the flute for us the whole time. So he's a flutist, I believe. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast Day. Good morning, thank you. Okay, so you go by the name Ansong. Yes, please. Okay, Ansong. Yeah, but Ansong. what's your full name? My full name is Richmond Eni Mansong. Richmond Eni Mansong. Yes, but please. you prefer to just use the same name? Yes, because really? I love the name. Because you? I love the name. You and love the name Ansong? I want to imitate my dad. Oh, okay. And, and your dad is really proud of what you're doing? Sure. He's mm. a flute player as well. Oh, he plays flute himself? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I've seen, for the first time in my life, I think, I've seen this black instrument. Can you please pick it up? Okay. Super. This black instrument, it's, I, I, I was wondering exactly what, what, what it was, but I suppose it's also a flute? Yeah, it's a flute, but it's in a sax form. A flute in a sax form? Yeah. So like a saxo flute? Yeah, actually, for me, I call it the bamboo sax. Bamboo sax? Yes. It's made of bamboo? Yeah. I thought it was made of plastic. Let me, let me figure it out so this is actually bamboo mm -mm. wow it, it really looks like it's made of plastic for real anyway um so there's no like anything is it the same yeah it has the same is? holes uh -huh. and the finger wings mm -hmm. of the other center bin okay yeah but just the difference is the reed the reed the mouth of mm -hmm. the sax and the sound Super. But how long have these ones been in the system? Actually, I don't know. Because okay, but when did you get this one? My dad gave it to me. That was last year, December. So he taught you how to play the flute? Actually, not really. I took it from him and I started playing, but a little tutorials from him. Oh, okay. So you started playing. You, you admired. Uh, was he your inspiration? Why yeah, did you sure. get into flute playing in the first place? Actually, I love the sound of the flute. Uh -huh. And actually, I love music. Hmm. I can't do without music. I sleep with music. I wake up with music. Anything about miss music. Super. I okay. love the flute too. Hmm. That's why. So where, where do you usually play this? Actually, I've played many uh, at many places. Mm -hmm. Piano bar, plus two, three, three. Actually, I perform on the stage of Charlie Wati. Hmm. Yeah. Jazz Waga, Wagadugu with the Wale sound. You know this, you're multi-talented. You've, you're, you're like super when it comes to playing it. It's not just me, the viewers who are watching, you know, over two million people are watching you right now. Okay. And then they know how talented you are. Yeah. But then I want to ask you a straightforward question. Okay. Are you making money from this? Yes and no, because mm. sometimes it's space when you are playing outside. Sometimes mm -hmm. someone will just call you, oh, please, I want you to play for me. But please, I have this 100 cities I want to give to you. Please take it small. Mm -hmm. But not that I'm making a huge money from it, but I'm looking forward to You're looking forward to from it, yeah. Okay. So would you, would you do something alongside playing the flute? Or yeah, I do. I do. I do okay. things. Actually, I'm a footballer. Oh, you're a footballer as well? Yeah. Okay, so if you had the chance to be at the level of uh, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay, and okay, he's not in my team. Let me throw him away. Let's go for Kevin De Bruyne. If you had yeah. the chance to be at the level of Kevin De Bruyne or Sergio Cunaguero, you know, you know them. Yeah, I good. Know them. And then you had the chance to be at the level of um, a good instrument player, like super worldwide instrumentalist sort yeah. of thing. Which one would you go for? Actually, I'll go for music. You go for music yeah. instead of football. Yeah. Why? Because music thing is not too stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you enjoy it, you feel it. Actually, you get into the world of different people and different client. Actually, I want, I mean, I mean, like when you are playing any instrument, mm -hmm. it's 
like you travel from this like this world, earth, yeah. this world to mm. another world wow you feel different and me i don't sweat when i play you don't sweat when you're playing i don't sweat because i enjoy what i'm doing i love it i feel okay it's like you are you are you are enjoying yourself and you are being paid and you're being paid for enjoying yourself yeah. but as a stand now would you say the money is enough from this industry that you found yourself in because this is unique actually yeah. i mean we had uh the, the likes of uh Ijak Honimo and we had old like they were they were doing it in music form beyond the flute they were adding words and the likes the instruments that they were playing we yeah. had you know people playing xylophones and even in recent times we have the like, kina yusubes and the likes but do you since you are not adding words do you see marketability okay in this? actually i don't do this alone uh-huh tell me it's because we the imprint Okay, called. that's why. So I tell, tell me what you do. I do with a band. You do with a band. Oh, yeah. nice. Actually, and what was the name was, of the band? I was then playing a wale sound. Oh, but now I just want to be doing my thing. I love to worship with my instruments. Yeah, I, so, I noticed most of your songs. Are, are you so, Catholic? No. Okay, but most of your songs are ch hymns. Yes, yes, yes I hymns. love the lyrics of the hymns. That's why I use it when I play. Interesting. But I played an apostolic hymns too. You play apostolic hymns yes, as well. Yes, I'm, I'm apostolic. You're apostolic. Yeah. Okay. So, do you play this in church as well? Sure. You play it in church as well. Yeah. Okay. So, are you able to use the flute to convey a message, or you 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 use it for only songs? I'm looking at it from the level of drums. You know, we are talking drums. People use to convey yeah. messages, or when it comes to flutes, is exclusively songs. No, it's not exclusive mm -hmm. song actually. This one is then made for mm -hmm. like we knew it to be a, a instrument played when someone is dead yes because it's used for dead dead so that's what we know it so then it's used to announce that someone is dead when you hear the sound of the flute mm -hmm. it's sending a message that oh, someone is dead yeah and actually i've been playing it with poets too. It's like when they are doing their stuff, I just improvise my sound and just fuse it with them. Okay. So this one and this one. This is, let's say, a modern form of a flute because yeah. it has the sax thing at yeah. the top. Okay. So, sorry. Okay. How do you move like this? Good. Yeah. Okay. So it has a sax thing at the top. It has the flute body. Everything yeah. else is flute about it. Now, between this instrument and the one we're used to, please, can I have it? Between this instrument and this instrument, which yeah. one do you prefer? Okay. Honestly. I prefer the tuba. I love this because I started with this. Bef because this has been me throughout. Tuba. And which one is easier to use? For instance, me, I'm a beginner. Which hey, one will be? This one. This one will be easier yeah. than this one. Why? Because you have to learn how to use the reed first. Okay. Because this the, is the reed. Yeah. Okay. So you don't just blow through it. No. When There's you just put it. like blow through it you can't get the sound ah yes but you can blow the flute and you get the sound how old are you i'm 28 28 and you i think you're doing very well i think this you have chosen for yourself as a passion and hopefully you're going to make huge gains from it but you see yourself being i mean outside the band do you see a possibility of a collaboration between you using your flute and maybe an artist out there Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've tried that, but actually I've forgotten the artist name. Mm. I've recorded with some artists, okay. and I'm looking forward to record with one of my mates, and he's doing dance all. Okay, and I, okay, well, I, I, we wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to fusing my fluid with into a dance hall. Into a dance hall thing? Yeah. Oh, and this was you singing gospel? Yeah, <laughs> I but, learn, like gospel hymn tunes. Yes, or maybe dance or dance or with different message. I mean, different lines of lyrics hmm. because you can have a gospel dance or two. Hmm. So, hmm. like Elephant Man's gospel. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, in, in case any person wants to reach you, because clearly you're very talented, how do people reach you? Like a social media page? Yeah, okay. That I, have can a, reach you I, have, I have a Facebook. A Facebook page. Yeah, page. Which is Anson Junior. Anson Junior. Yeah. Right. Uh, Anson cool. Junior. Super. Yeah. Okay. And actually, 
you can i love people messaging me direct not from my page because i've not boosted my page yet I'm okay yet to. you're yet to yeah so then and how do my, people message you direct facebook name is rich money name and so that's my phone name mm -hmm. that's it Okay, Rich Money Name Ansong. Yeah. Or Ansong Jr. Yeah. That's your fan page, probably. Yes. Okay, super. Thank you so much for coming. Any final words really quickly before we go? Okay, my final words is I want to give thanks to the creator because mm. he has been with me throughout. Amen. Because I, I didn't do this on my own. Mm. I can just be sleeping and someone will call me. Hey, hello, Ansong Charlie, I want you to come and play. Like yesterday, a friend called me. Hey, Hands on, Charlie. I want you to come and please. No mind. It's okay. You can drop the phone now. So now, it's like I want to give thanks to okay. everybody, my viewers, mm. and especially Nana Asante, Nana Senti, mm. the one who called me to mm. be here, and okay. you and everybody. Okay. Thank you very much, Anson, for joining us on Breakfast Daily. You're welcome. Okay. We'll go for a quick break. Anson will play another, you know, tune before we we wrap up the program but i'm expecting jiffa to join me here instead of eating in the background if i stop eating the banku in the background and just come join us stay tuned to breakfast daily good morning ghana good morning world you're into the breakfast daily on cttv stoneboy sso keep it locked don't log off Beep. Jealousy go shame against the bad boy. Jealousy go shame. Whoa. What's up, guys? Your boy Kitty, and right now you are watching Breakfast Daily. Oh, Lord of mercy. Let's go. They say, why you they love them like this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hi, everyone. It's Miss V. Make sure you keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Don't go anywhere. Tiptoe. Swag. Okay. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. It's mm. been an insightful mm -hmm. morning. Yes, very, 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 very insightful. And of course, we're always happy to spend our time with you. Yes. And um, we uh, hope to see you same time tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Make this a lovely, lovely day. And we leave you in the hands of the super talented and song junior. Yes. <laughs>
state of war over. Ethiopia and Eritrea sign a historic peace deal and formally restore relations. Malawians on edge after a deadly attack on a man with albinism. And we take you to California inside the magical museum of making music. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCory. This is Africa 54. We begin in East Africa tonight, where the state of war between Ethiopia and Eritrea has come to an end. And the two countries signed a historic peace deal in the Eritrean capital, Asmara, ending one of Africa's longest conflicts. Eritrea's information minister took to Twitter on Monday, posting a photo of the two countries' leaders signing the agreement. Yemani Meskel said a new era of peace and friendship has been ushered. He added that trade, transport, transport and telecommunications ties between the two countries will now resume. Monday's deal was capped by a historic embrace uh, between Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and the Eritrean President Isaias Afrewoki. Ahmed surprised his nation last month when he announced that Addis Ababa would honor a deal signed in 2000 to end two-year border war. Uh, the war killed an estimated 70,000 uh, people. Ethiopia had long refused to accept the terms of the deal, which included withdrawing from the border town of Badme, Eritrea, the former province of Ethiopia, broke away in 1993. For more on this historic series of events, I'm joined in, in studio here by viewers Salem Solomon. Salem, welcome once again. Thanks for having so, me. So, first, it looks like this has caught everybody by surprise. Why? Nobody saw it coming. Because of uh, the statements of agreeing with the Algeria's agreement in 2000 has been said in the past before. Now, it seems like the new Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, uh, his uh, statement and gesture uh, carries more weight than and the Prime Minister before him and the, the, uh, the former uh, Prime Minister who signed the deal. Uh, Melis and I before him as well. And so it was uh, very interesting to watch when the Eritrean delegation went a couple of weeks back uh, to Addis Ababa. That was a very historic moment on its own, but it was preparing for this moment that happened on Sunday where Isasa Forgi and two leaders uh, and uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed were embracing. The people of Asmara were in the streets cheering, uh, welcoming with uh, t-shirts embroidered with the pictures of the two leaders on there. Uh, uh, showing and, and excited about the prospects of peace. This is 20 years in the making. Mm -hmm. Now, th these things are never uh, easy to come by or to happen. Uh, from what you're hearing, what might have uh, led to what you're witnessing now? I think the fact that uh, the new prime minister is uh, from the Oromo ethnic group and, and represents uh, a different uh, political weight uh, than that the air trains have been expecting for a while is what people are saying is what made this uh, different. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, uh, this agreement has been um, uh, hailed by a lot of people as a positive thing. Um, and what's, what Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed might get, take back from this deal is the uh, opening of the ports. You know, when yeah. independence, uh, when Eritrea got its independence, Ethiopia became landlocked. So they were not able to access the ports of Masawa and Aseb to do trade or economic growth mm -hmm. in that way. And 90 percent of the, the trade was going through Djibouti's port. So that's been a, a major hurdle. So these are major things. Yeah. Flight next week, Ethiopian yeah. Airlines is going to start next week straight from Addis Ababa to Asmara. That's that a is... monumental change. Exactly. Now, how about those who are looking at the geopolitical uh, or dimension here and perhaps looking at uh, the relationship between uh, the rest of the other countries with Eritrea and Ethiopia. You're talking about, uh, for example, Sudan, Egypt. You're talking about the Egypt countries. Could they have played uh, a part into what we're seeing today? So there's been an underground discussion about solving this 20-year stalemate and, and, and hostility and animosity between the two countries. It has regional implications. Just before, before uh, I came, uh, when the peace deal was uh, uh, signed, uh, we heard that Eritrea is going to be welcomed back uh, to the regional bloc, IGAD. And so that's a major change because Eritrea pulled out of IGAD because Ethiopia in 2007 uh, intervened in the conflict in Somalia with the help of the uh, Western world. And that was not sitting well with the Eritrea. So it's been a proxy war here and there. We're hearing that sanctions might be lifted. The UN chief just said on a press conference in Addis Ababa on Monday today 
that uh, this has been, uh, um, you know, that there's a possibility of sanctions lifted. So Eritrea is basically, uh, Eritrea's government's getting a lot of things that they're saying, so it has a regional implication and beyond. Most people actually never sometimes tell the difference between a person from Eritrea and from Ethiopia. They see them interacting just okay, 